Hey everyone, welcome to the channel and I hope you're doing well. If you're new here, what we do on Unfortunate Ends is talk about people who have had tragic or unfortunate ends to their life, including mysteries, murders and crime, as well as executions. So if you're interested, be sure to subscribe and make sure to have notifications turned on. Anyway, let's get into the video. On the 20th of June 1914, a 50-year-old man, Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife, were assassinated by a young Serbian nationalist in the city of Sarajevo. The Archduke's murder set off a chain of events which, in the weeks ahead, spiralled into the First World War. But why was he assassinated, and how did the event lead to such a catastrophic conflict? The man whose death would spark a world war was born on the 18th of December 1863 in Graz in Austria as Franz Ferdinand Karl Ludwig Joseph Maria Habsburg. He was the eldest son of Archduke Karl Ludwig, the brother of Emperor Franz Joseph I, the head of the Austro-Hungarian Empire from 1848 through the second half of the 19th century and into the early 20th century. As a nephew of the Emperor and a member of the Imperial House of Habsburg, Franz Joseph grew up at the Royal Court in Vienna with all its formality and extensive wealth. In 1875, when he was 11 years of age, Franz succeeded the Dukedom of Mantua in northern Italy. However, he was not destined to succeed to the imperial throne. That honour would fall on the Emperor's son, Crown Prince Rudolf, but in 1889 this line of succession suddenly changed with dramatic implications for Franz Ferdinand. In January of that year, the Emperor's son was found dead at his hunting lodge along with his mistress outside Vienna almost certainly a double suicide. The Emperor did not have another son, and since he was a man of advanced years already in 1889, it was unlikely that he would produce another heir. Consequently, the succession now devolved to his brother, Archduke Karl, Franz Ferdinand's father. The Archduke was already 55 years of age himself in 1889, therefore, it was now very likely that Franz Ferdinand would someday succeed as ruler of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. This became all but assured in 1896, when his father died of typhoid, making Franz Ferdinand the heir designate to Franz Joseph, the latter already being 65 years of age at the time of Karl's death. Despite this newfound position as heir to the throne of one of Europe's great powers, Franz Ferdinand did not feel the responsibility weighing heavily upon him, while he did take up several honorary positions within the Imperial military forces, his primary passions were travel and hunting, and he spent most of the 1890s indulging in these, visiting Asia, Africa and Australia. The Archduke's inattention to his position as heir to the Empire was highly negligent, as the Austro-Hungarian Empire was enduring a period of considerable crisis. The empire at the time stretched well into the Balkans. As such, it was a multi-ethnic entity, with a vast array of Germans, Hungarians, Czechs, Croats, Bosnians and Slovaks making up a sizeable part of its people. One of these minorities was the Serbs, amongst whom there was a growing nationalist movement, particularly from 1867 when a Serbian state centred on the city of Belgrade had become independent from the Ottoman Empire. This was right on the border of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and tension would rage on for the next 50 years, over whether Serb nationalists within the Austro-Hungarian Empire should break away and join the Serbian state to the southeast. In this Serb nationalism are to be found the roots of Franz Ferdinand's assassination. In the early 1910s, the recently formed Serb nationalist movement in the Balkans, known as the Black Hand, had been planning violent actions in the southern parts of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the goal being to create political instability which would lead certain regions there with large Serb populations to break away and join Serbia as part of Greater Serbia or Yugoslavia. In the summer of 1914, an opportunity to assassinate an extremely high-profile individual presented itself 
when the Emperor Franz Joseph commanded his heir, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, to make a trip to the Habsburg's southern territories and observe some imperial military manoeuvres there in June 1914. The Archduke and his wife, Duchess Sophie, set off on the trip and planned to visit the city of Sarajevo afterwards, on the 28th of June, to open a new state museum there and perform some other imperial functions. When news of this reached the Black Hand movement, they began plotting the assassination of the Archduke, and this planning was underway as early as March 1914. Six Serb and Bosnian subjects of the Austro-Hungarian Empire were recruited in the weeks that followed, one of whom was a Bosnian Serb by the name of Gavrilo Princip. Weapons were prepared, and a preliminary plan devised to carry out the assassination when the Archduke and his wife passed through Sarajevo on the 28th of June. This would be attempted on what was then called a Pell Quay, a large thoroughfare running through central Sarajevo along the northern bank of the river Miljaka. On the morning of the 28th of June, the six assassins were waiting along the Archduke and his wife's planned route on Apel Quay in the centre of the city. Early in the morning, Franz and his wife had arrived at Sarajevo train station. They then proceeded in a three-car cavalcade to the army barracks to watch the military manoeuvres that had been planned. After that, they left the barracks at about 10am to head into central Sarajevo. It was a Sunday, and despite the high-profile individuals visiting the city, many of the local police were off duty. Accordingly, the route through which the three cars now proceeded was undermanned. Incredibly, the Black Hand assassins were not noticed or screened. As the cavalcade passed along a Quay at 10 minutes past 10 in the morning, the assassins were expected to try to assassinate the Archduke using their guns or makeshift bombs, which they had been provided with. However, several of them, including Princip, froze when the opportunity presented itself. One did throw his explosive, but it bounced off the car carrying the royal couple and detonated under one of the other cars, seriously wounding the passengers. The other cars now sped away, including that bearing the imperial couple. Surprisingly, the Archduke proceeded to give the pre-arranged speech he was due to give at the Sarajevo town hall instead of leaving the city. Then, in an even more startling series of events, when the couple left the town hall to visit a hospital, their driver accidentally took the wrong turn off a Pell Quay and went on to a side street. It was a fateful wrong turn. Completely by chance, Gavrilo Princip was standing outside a delicatessen here, no doubt pondering on the botched assassination attempt less than an hour earlier. But this time, he did not freeze. Seeing the Archduke and his wife, he drew his FN Model 1910 pistol and moving up to point blank range next to the car, discharged two shots. One hit Franz Ferdinand in the neck, the other struck the Duchess in the abdomen. The pair both lost consciousness in the car and were quickly rushed to the governor's house in Sarajevo. It was no use though, they were both dead by 11.30am. Princip's subsequent life was horrific. He attempted to shoot himself immediately after the assassination, but the gun was wrestled from him by the Archduke's security detail. He stood on trial in December 1914 and was convicted. Owing to the fact that he was 27 days shy of his 20th birthday, he avoided the death penalty, but his fate was perhaps much worse. He was sentenced to 20 years imprisonment, the maximum sentence at the time, but such was the appalling nature of his imprisonment, chained to a wall in a small cell at Terezin Military Fortress, in what is now the Czech Republic, that he quickly developed tuberculosis. His right arm had to be amputated, and he tried to hang himself in 1916, in his solitary confinement cell, before he eventually died on the 28th of April 1918, weighing less than seven stone. The Archduke's assassination set off a chain of events which spiralled into a world war over the next two months. 
when news reached Vienna of Franz Ferdinand's murder, certain elements within the Empire's government were determined to utilise the incident as a pretext for a war with Serbia. Accordingly, Princip's ties to the Serbian government were quickly uncovered, and the government in Vienna soon convinced the Austro-Hungarian Emperor to undertake aggressive actions against the smaller Balkan state. Franz Joseph now sought the support of his ally, Germany. The government in Berlin was sympathetic to the Austro-Hungarian cause, and on the 6th of July sent an assurance of support should the Viennese government pursue action in the Balkans. On the 23rd of July, the government in Vienna then sent an outrageous list of demands to the Serbian government in Belgrade. One of these stipulations was that Austria-Hungary should be allowed to conduct its own investigation into the assassination on Serbian soil, but this would constitute a severe infringement on Serbian autonomy and could not be accepted. When the Serbs refused these demands, Vienna broke off diplomatic relations. On the same day, both Serbia and their own ally Russia began mobilising their forces. The war party in Vienna was not dissuaded however, and on the 28th of July, war was declared on Serbia. Belgrade was shelled that night. The conflict, which now erupted, has become known as the Third Balkan War, though it quickly broadened to become at first a general European war, and finally, the First World War. As the diplomatic crisis widened, the centre of activity switched in the last days of July 1914 from the Balkans to Germany and Britain. Both countries urged the government in Vienna to negotiate. However, when Russia began mobilising its troops on the 29th and 30th of July, the possibility of a relatively peaceful conclusion to the July crisis ended, as Russia was allied with Britain and France. Consequently, in the days that followed, the great powers of Europe began mobilising. On the 1st of August, Germany declared war on Russia in defence of its Austrian ally. The following day, Berlin negotiated a secret treaty with the Ottoman Empire of Turkey. Then, on the 3rd of August, Germany opened a second front by declaring war on France. A day later, Germany invaded neutral Belgium, which led Britain in turn to declare war on Germany. Thus, what has become known as the July Crisis, a regional political emergency in the Balkans, which resulted from the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, ballooned in the six weeks that followed to become a general European war. Three weeks later, Japan, which had an allegiance with Britain, declared war on Germany, expanding the conflict globally and ushering in the First World War. Such were the consequences of the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo by Gavrilo Princip on the 28th of June 1914. Thank you so much for watching this video on the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave me a like and a comment down below, and if you're new, why not subscribe. I hope you guys have notifications turned on so you get all my videos as soon as they're uploaded, and if you have any suggestions, be sure to leave them down in the comments. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next unfortunate end. Thanks.